All right, guys, so I finished drilling out all of the spot wells, which uh, is not fun and took me over an hour to do, but uh, you can see the crazy pattern of spot wells they had on this side. And so I just drill them all the way through because um, that allows me to use those existing holes uh, to plug weld the new frame rail in there. Uh, also cleaned up some of the rust on the floor which, by the way, if you're not gonna cut the rust out of your car, uh, you need to make sure that you get rid of it one way or the other. Um, and you see that looks pretty decent there. I still have to go back in with the wire wheel on the drill to get the places where I couldn't reach with this. But uh, this is my go-to for getting rust off of the sheet metal. So this is a 40 grit, four and a half inch uh, sanding disc on the angle grinder. You can see this is pretty black from the seam sealer that was in here but uh, it does a really good job of getting out the rust and uh, I half kind of regret not replacing this entire floor pan but as you can see it cleans up really nice so uh, there's really no reason to um, cut this out it's just a little more work because um, you got to get in there and clean it all up I didn't have that problem over there because that's a brand new floor pan but um, anyway, so I got that all cleaned up in there. So when I'm ready, I can, I can start welding. So after everything was cut out, uh, you guys saw me uh, install this frame rail here. So um, it's pretty easy uh, leaving the upper torque box in there. A little bit of a trick to get it to drop in there. Uh, and then once it gets in there, you wanna make sure that it's uh, as far up against this post as you can possibly get. Um, and that's, there, there was a little bit of a gap there um, before I disassembled the car. Um, so there's a little bit of a gap there now. I might have to bring it over a little bit. It looks like from back here, it might need to come over a little bit, uh, but that shouldn't be too much trouble to do. Now I have the car supported on a jack stand and have a piece of two inch tubular under there. So the car is actually sitting higher right now than uh, it should be. But once I remove that jack stand, the car should drop back down and uh, we'll see what that looks like here. And you can see there's a little bit of flex in the frame rail right now, but that's fine. So we have it mounted in here to the anchor points on our jig. And um, we'll see what happens when we drop this car down. So we'll see how everything's lining up. So we'll get that out of there. And you can see, so the car dropped down a little bit, uh, but notice that gap right there. So um, there's enough flex in this car that when you do this, uh, the car is probably gonna move away. It's gonna move away from uh, where the frame rail sits here. It did the same exact thing over there um so i found a little trick to be able to pull this back together and that's just using some uh, clamps so i'll show you guys how that looks Last time we heard a lot of demon noises coming out of the car. And you can see how, how easily this is pulling together. The important thing is to make sure you're not actually bending this metal to close the gap. We sh you should actually be pulling the car back and uh, the frame rail slightly forward. So rather than continue cranking just in one spot, because again, I don't want to bend the sheet metal, I want to bring the car together. So I'm going to apply 
pressure in three different places and uh, try to do this as evenly as possible. Back, back this guy up a little bit. Uh, this one's a little trickier because I don't have much space here with the torque box. So we'll just pull that one in. We'll crank this one a bit. Again, making sure metal isn't bending. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but uh, as I tighten it, you can hear the car creaking a bit. So that's, that's everything shifting back to where it needs to be. So again, you don't want to bring the frame rail to the car because the frame rail is sitting on the jig. We want to bring the car back to the frame rail, which is what we're doing here. I know you guys heard that one. <laughs> she likes to make some creaking noises when you bring it back together. Oh, there's another one. That's how you know you're doing the right thing because you're bringing the car back. This thing's like a wet noodle, these unibody cars. When you take a piece of structure out, the, the rest of the thing just becomes like a wet noodle and it's just gonna flex around, it's gonna move. Um, not to mention everything I was doing here, drilling out the plug welds or uh, the uh, spot welds. You know, you're just, you're moving the car around. So these clamps here do a great job of just bringing it back together. Notice it didn't bend any of the metal. I'll show you guys a better look here. Um, you can see that I didn't bend these two pieces together. This actually just, just pulled the car back together. And uh, there are the holes here for the uh, spot welds. So I can leave these clamps in place until I get the welder and start to uh, weld some of these plugs up. Once, the, once you have enough plug welds in here, then you can take these clamps off and uh, it really shouldn't go anywhere. So uh, that's pretty much where this thing is gonna sit. We'll take a look at how things are lining up underneath of the car. So if you're doing the same thing to your 1970, uh, you're in luck because I have the specifications right here for the 1970. Now, I built my jig slightly different than what uh, these specs were calling for here with regard to the datum line. So the factory spec sets the datum line six and a half inches below. I think I might have explained in a previous video that my datum line is actually two inches below. So that gives me a difference of four and a half inches that I have to take off of these measurements. So that gives me uh, eight and 11 sixteenths on the back should be my height. Uh, right here in the center, uh, 14 and seven eighths. So you have to take four and a half inches off of that. Um, I'm not gonna do the math in my head right now. I think I have it written down somewhere. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just double check these measurements again. Uh, we should be 44 and a half inches from outside frame rail to outside frame rail at the back of the car. And uh, we should be 37 and three quarters up here. Now this number shouldn't have changed whatsoever um, because the body cart had these mounting points already fixed and they were 37 and three quarters of an inch apart. So uh, as long as I didn't move those vertical supports there for the body cart, Rest assured, that is the correct distance already. So that's not even something that I need to worry about measuring. But I will definitely take some measurements here. All right, we'll check these measurements here. So um, because I have this two-inch bar in here, uh, that actually changes my measurement from this two inch bar up to the frame rail should be four. And um, <laughs> forget the number already. Four and 11 sixteenths. So we're just shy of five inches over here. And uh, that looks pretty good. 
So that's almost right on the money right there. And then here, uh, this one should be 10 and 3 eighths corrected for my jig. And we are just like 10 and 3 eighths on the money here. So we're on the money here. We're really close to being on the money here. This is about two, two, two or 3 sixteenths of an inch off. No big deal. I mean, this thing, even with the uh, jig all welded in, this thing still moves a little bit. And one thing was when I was working on the car, I was rocking and rolling this thing every which way. And you can actually see that the frame jig is has moved from the jack stand. So there must have been a little low spot in the floor right there. Um, not a big deal though. Not, not worried about that whatsoever. And that's another thing too, when you build a jig like this, make sure it is, it is secured to the floor. Now I could have taken a two inch piece and ran it down to the floor. I wasn't about to do that. Jack stands is perfectly fine. Um, if you need to, you can use uh, some wedges or whatnot to uh, get the support on these rails here. But even though this is two by two tubular steel, which is, I believe this is a 14 gauge, okay? You wouldn't think that this can bend, but I'm telling you, it does flex. I mean, it, it, it flexes a little bit. So when you're building the jig, you need this to be completely solid it can't move you know have this thing anchored to the floor supported to the floor while you build your jig and really it should be supported right now until the both of the frame rails are fully welded in now that the driver's side is fully welded in except for the floor pan area on the top no big deal and um, i'm not going to weld this side in just yet so that's one thing. Um, you wanna make sure that everything is spot on before you start welding. So I, I like to spend a little bit of time and basically just drink a beer and take a look at uh, what I've got going on before I even turn the welder on or before I even roll the welding cart over here. I'm gonna sit back, I'm gonna have a beer, I'm gonna look at how I'm gonna look at this from every single possible angle. I'm gonna probably end up measuring this thing a hundred times before I ever put a bead of weld on here because I wanna be confident. I wanna be 110% sure that this is exactly where it needs to go before I weld this thing in. Once it's welded, it's game over. So if it's, if it's jacked up, it's jacked up. Um, and then you've just created uh, a hell of a lot more work. Um, yes, you could drill all the welds out and fix it but you know you're just adding so much time and not for nothing uh before i even picked up this frame rail tonight i spent an hour and a half getting these spot welds out of here to get the old pieces out uh, a little bit of time cleaning up the rust on the floor here just because i needed a break from the spot welds but uh taking spot welds out is my least favorite thing uh on old cars like this they're a bitch to find Number one, some of them are easy. It's just glaringly obvious where the spot weld is. Um, you know, in a lot of cases, it's difficult to see where the spot weld is and you won't know until you start separating the two pieces uh, with the air chisel. Uh, so when I started doing that, I was finding welds that I couldn't see um, that, you know, I then had to go back and try and drill out. Another issue that I ran into is that a lot of these welds were bigger than the spot weld bit that I was using. So even though I would drill the material out with the spot weld bit, uh, the pieces were still stuck together. Uh, so that was really frustrating, um, considering that when I did the driver's side, that spot weld cutter zipped right through them and the pieces came apart easy. This side was not the case. These welds were larger. Not sure how the hell that happens, but again, you know, these cars are hand built. They were hand built uh, in the late 60s and early 70s. So, you know, there's gonna be variations um, and these cars certainly aren't perfect um, in their original condition. And well, it's not gonna be perfect either when I'm done with it, but it's gonna be uh, close enough that I'm gonna be happy with it. Um, and even then, I think it's going to be better 
than uh, what it was from the factory. It's already gained some strength with how uh, I have rebuilt the front of the car and uh, patched in the uh, frame and the floor supports. In my opinion, it's already a lot stronger than it was from the factory. It certainly doesn't flex as much as it did before. So that's all we can do at the end of the day. We just try and do our best job and uh, try and build these things better than they were originally. Um, so I'm just gonna take another measurement across the back here. Actually, I just realized I didn't take a measurement across the back here, but this should be 44 and a half inches if memory serves me correctly. Whoop, from outside of the frame rail to outside of the frame rail. And if I can get my tape measure to stay. And I am 44 and a half inches on the money. So that is on the ball, 44 and a half inches. I still don't know how the hell I managed to uh, do that. Um, yeah, that's just... That's just fucking weird because I, I, I rarely do anything perfect. But how the hell did I... How the hell did I get that? 44 and a half inches on the freaking dick hair. Unbelievable. I guess when you love something, you just, you do a good job at it. All right, guys. Thanks for checking out the channel. Stays right by my side